first greet everybody. Leave your hat alone. I greet forgot everybody. what it is. Oh, well, amigos. Hola, amigos. Feliz Cinco Don't tell me, de tell them. Hola, amigos. Feliz Cinco de Mayo. Yay. Okay. Oh, well, go for it. Yeah, go crazy. Let's party. We got a minute. Ooh, a siesta, huh? All right, just don't get them together. Okay, you are. Wow. Okay. Did you know that me and your mom used to live in Mexico? I didn't know that. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was probably the coolest place we've ever lived. Even though we lived in D.C. for a while. Now stop messing with your hat. My goodness. So the coolest thing about Mexico for me was walking around eating all the food, obviously. But it was also really cool because, like, mariachis really do just hang out on the street. And they will just follow you around and play music and stuff. And it was actually really cool. But not so much here. So anyway. So now you have, what is this? Sombrero. Sombrero, yeah. And what are these? Maracas. You know that. I know. Oh. It's just I wanted to say it in Spanish, so I didn't know what it was. Maracas. It's maracas. Oh. Oh, yeah. And do you know what we're making today? Mexican wedding cookies, otherwise called pulvarones. Isn't that delicious? Yeah, okay. So my pulvarones are gonna be much, much less sweet than the ones that you would typically find in Mexico. Uh, Mexicans have absolutely no disregard for their sugar in their sweets, which is fine. Um, but I like mine to be a little more middle of the road, especially since we have so much sugar in a lot of our foods here in America, North, in the United States. That's something I learned, and don't do it to interrupt me. That's something I learned in Mexico right away. Do not say that you're from America because the Mexicans are also in North America and they get very upset about that. And when you're a big dumb white guy, they do not like that at all. So, lesson number one, we're all Americans, right buddy? Fist bump. All right, so, pulverones. Today we have half a cup of butter, three measly little tablespoons of powdered sugar, one cup of uh, all-purpose, or you could even go bread flour if you want them to stay more round. Uh, and then we will have a cup of finely ground nuts. I will use pecans or pecans or pecans or pecans or however you want to say it. Or you could typically use walnuts, okay? So we're gonna have some fun with this. In the bowl of our mixer, I have four ounces of butter. That is a half cup. Yes, sir. Can we this kind of one? Okay. Uh, for those of you at home, that is one stick of butter. I'm going to put my sugar in there. What you will see is I don't have any salt in this recipe, which is pretty uncharacteristic for me. I also don't have vanilla in this recipe. If you want either, feel free to use it. As always, it is to taste. If you want, if you wanted to add other flavors, you could as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these chopped pecans, which you could use, and I want them cut even finer. And instead of pulling out a knife and a cutting board, or putting them in the food processor, I'm actually gonna use my spice grinder on my nuts. Now, a word to the wise on this. If you're gonna do this, and you're worried that you're not gonna be able to pay attention enough, or that your nuts may be old, or perhaps you've previously toasted your nuts, which I always endorse, freeze your nuts, and you can grind them even better because they will be frozen, and they will release less oil, and thus you can get them finer. Go ahead, Blaze. Um, the top part is like kind of maracla and being weird, so if you heard that, then that's fine. Okay, so Blaze, Blaze is what we call our lookout. He lets us know everything the toddler is or isn't doing at all times, which we kind of appreciate, even though we're almost always looking directly at him. And then Blaze wants to tell us about it. So you're like our little annotator, right? Yeah, okay. It, I mean, someone who tells us what's going on. So I'm gonna grind these in my spice grinder. I'll give you a quick little example. One, two, three, four, five little pulses. Should be all you need, okay? So because my spice grinder is kind of a standard size, I can't do a ton at one time. So I will do that. And then while I'm grinding these, Blaze, will you tell us our joke? Why can't you trust burritos with a secret? Burritos? Why can't you trust burritos with a secret? I don't know. Why can't you trust burritos with a secret? They tend to steal the beans. 
spill the beans. Oh my goodness, what kind of beans? Oh, okay. Dinah's favorite beans are barracho beans because kids. It's okay, you'll understand when you're older. Why don't you give us our second joke? Because I'm almost done grinding these. Um, how about about you? Okay. What does a nosy pepper do? I don't know. It gets jalapeno business. Yeah, I know, it's funny. Anyway, so. In the bowl, we are doing a modified creaming method in the fact that I also get my nuts Hola. in there for the creaming because I want them to release their oils into the product early. And because I'm going straight from the grinder into the bowl, I will get the most of that flavor right away. Okay? Make sure your machine's off. We'll drop this down. We'll turn this on. Again, hands, just to make sure we don't make a huge mess. And we're creaming. Now, when do I know that we're fully creamed, Mr. Blaze? Do you remember? No? When everything's light, pale, fluffy, and uniform. Now, here's a little thing that you guys may not know at home. Uh, professionally, a lot of times we use what is called 6X powdered sugar. Whereas, whereas the stuff that you buy at the store is 10X powdered sugar. What that means is we buy the powdered sugar that isn't ground as fine because it costs way, way less, and we can just throw it in a food processor or whatever, uh, and it doesn't typically have that much cornstarch in it. So it's closer to what if the, everybody who watches the British baking show or French shows or anything, it's more closely associated with icing sugar, which is just very, very fine sugar, than it is powdered sugar, which is what you buy at the grocery store. Neither is better or worse, but it's something to keep in mind. So because I'm using 6X sugar, I can see little clumps of powdered sugar in there. I will cream this until those have dissolved. Make sense? All right. Now, hopefully through the series, careful with your sombrero, you've learned about the differences in the flours and their protein content. We've learned that all-purpose flour has a lower protein content than bread flour. And the reason we would choose a lower protein content is to make a softer product. For example, cakes almost always call for cake flour because we want less protein, so they typically settle flat on top, whereas if you have a higher protein flour, you get something that's shaped more like a muffin, you have to cut more off of your cake. Now, muffin? what I don't recommend is using a low protein flour for this product because we're gonna bake them, they should be crumbly. If you have too low of a protein, they'll end up closer to something like a pecan sandy, which is also delicious, but not a Mexican wedding cookie. You know why they're called Mexican wedding cookies, bud? Well, it's because they are often eaten at Mexican weddings, right? No surprise there. But what's funny, not funny, but it's interesting because I'm a nerd for food. This is all I do all day, every day, forever. Uh, is that pretty much every culture has a cookie like this. Almost all of them, right? The two biggest ones that we know about are, of course, Mexican wedding cookies and Russian tea cookies, which are almost indistinguishable. They are almost the exact same. So why do you think that we have two cookies with the same name, but we only call it by the one name? Um. No idea. See, this is where the food thing kind of gets interesting when we talk about food and culture. So Mexican tea cookies, or Mexican wedding cookies, have been around forever, just like Russian tea cookies. Russian tea cookies were in fashion for a very long time, until the Cold War, and then suddenly we started calling them Mexican wedding cookies, because they weren't Russian, and it's just... Honestly, kind of silly, but that's how it works. So, you can learn a lot about history by looking at food. You can learn a lot about the history of technology by looking at food. And in this case, we learned about the Cold War. You're welcome. All right, so we've added our flour. We will cream this together just until it comes together. All right, nice, easy. It shouldn't take much. Everything is pretty fine. And this will have kind of a shortbread texture. Right? It won't be as stiff as our shortbread cookies were, but it won't need to be fully creamed because we don't have any eggs or really any kind of liquid to redistribute. Go ahead, Blaze, play. All right. So we scrape and scrape and scrape. What I recommend is chilling. Careful not to hit them together. What I recommend is chilling the dough. That way it'll make scooping them and shaping them much easier. Like this kind of shape? I said shape. 
yeah, shaping the dough. We don't shake the dough, but okay. Uh, but if you chill this, scooping it and shaping it will be easier. Of course, we are doing this very elaborate Facebook Live thing right now. All right, let's call it the maracas. Let's put them on. Thank you. So I'm going to scoop this. Blaze is going to hold out his hand. And I want you to roll this into a ball. You got to do it quick because the heat from your hands could melt it. So we just roll it real quick into a ball and we set it on our tray, right? Uh -huh. So you saw this wasn't too difficult, but this will do wonders for keeping your kids busy. Roll it, bud. Roll it into a ball. Now what these need to do is they need to go into a standard to even a moderately cool oven. So we say 350, you can even drop it down to around 325 or 300 degrees Fahrenheit. You can do convection or still, whatever you feel like doing. And we're going to bake them until they are fully cooked and dried out. Again, think about our shortbread cookies, right? We don't want to eat raw flour, but everything else in here is technically fine to eat. So all we're doing is baking them until they're dry. When they come out of the oven, they will then get rolled in powdered sugar again because we want more powdered sugar, right? They do not have to be rolled in powdered sugar, but that is kind of the quintessential look to give them that white, beautiful, snowy appearance. Yes, sir. Um, at this point, um, when they go in the oven, will they spread or what? That is a fantastic question. So the question is, when they go in the oven, will they spread? The answer is some, and the other answer is it depends on your flour. If we have a higher protein flour, they won't spread as much because it will absorb all of the liquid that melts out of the butter. But if you have like all-purpose flour, they will spread some, so you want to give them a little bit of room. Don't stack these too close together. Of course, if they are baked from cold, they will spread less. And if you are truly, truly worried about them being perfectly round, there's absolutely nothing that says you can't bake these in silicone sphere molds, right? If you want to get them perfect, keep going, buddy. We're going to get these rolled. So we're rolling, rolling, rolling. When they rolling come... Rolling like a ball. See what happens when you're not paying attention? Oh dear. Uh, so, roll we're rolling roll. these. Okay. When they come out of the oven, we like to let them cool a little bit and then they go into the powdered sugar. They should be warm enough that the powdered sugar will stick to it, but they should be cool enough that it doesn't melt right away. It's kind of a fine line. The best way to figure that out, try on there, right? If you put it on and the sugar kind of melts and dissolves, that's okay. You can always coat it more than once. Now, on the recipe on the website, which is where you can find it, I have also recommended that if you want a slightly more adult flavor, you could of course cut your powdered sugar with something like cocoa powder. You could put some cayenne pepper in there if you want a spicy note, or you can just go straight on with cinnamon, right? Now, don't ever be afraid when it calls for powdered sugar to cut it with something a little more savory. The sugar will absorb a lot of the extra like strength of something. Uh, for example, sugar and cayenne pepper is a beautiful mixture if it's done correctly. Make sure to kind of taste it on the side first. Uh, always go with more sugar than whatever you're trying to adulterate it with because you never want to run into any issues. So we're going to wrap this up, wait for any questions to come in. But these are Mexican wedding cookies slash polvorone slash Russian tea cookies slash snowball cookies. They have so many names. You can also use any nut that you want. Traditionally, they are done with walnuts or pecans or pecans or pecans. Or, or pecans. Or maybe even cook a pecan pecan. That's not a word, but sure. What about pecan? Not a word. All right. What about pecan? Okay. So you're having so much fun with this. You rolled that one for too long. Yeah, we don't have space for it. Back in the bowl, right? So that's what happens when you're too slow, bud. So we want to try and evenly space these as best as possible. It's very important to evenly space things before they go in the oven. Not uh -huh. Not only because ho uh -huh. hopefully are they the uh -huh. same size and it looks great, but also it allows air and heat to travel between them more evenly. So if we don't have any questions, are you done, buddy? <laughs> if you don't have any questions, we'll throw these in the oven and we'll take a picture of them when they are done. You can obviously comment in the sections. Uh, me and my amigo here, we'll check on them periodically. Something tells me he'll have these maracas for a while. And we look like we have a question coming in, so I will throw these in the oven. No, no question. Wait, it might be it, so it's not. Nada, Feliz Cinco de Mayo. Have some marks. Have a good day. You Bye. Know, none of us have to go to work tomorrow, so get crazy, I guess. Bye. Bye.